HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to this best of edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy here at the Anchor Desk. Today we are going to show some great highlights from this past year. Before we get to our best of portion, let's get you caught up with how it went for the Hopkinton Hillers in week one of the winter sports season. Hopkinton Hillers boys varsity hockey took on Ashland in their home opener. First period nearing five minutes left. Kirk will put it around the boards. Mayo getting involved in the action. A shot here, and that's a goal! The Hillers are on the board first. That was Jake Weinstock letting it rip. Good work behind the net. Ashland responded with 34 seconds left. Off the face-off, the Clockers find their ace. Left in the first period. Penalty will continue on into the second. The Hornung Rister goal. Word side up. Jackson Hornung makes it one to one, heading to the second period. About four and a half minutes into the second period, the Hillers went on a tear. Pass around the boards to Rogers. Rogers was trying to get it out in front to Hamlet. Hamlet. Now out in front, shot there, and that's a goal! Sean Walsh with a beauty of a shot. What a great setup. Yeah, great passing play all around. Puck behind the net up to Hamlet, Hamlet right out front. And the key to that was Walsh getting rid of it quick before the bodies could get over there to block that one. Nine and a half left in the second period. 2-1 Hillers lead. Here comes Aiden Walsh up the near side, showing off some speed. Now behind the net is Rogers shot there and that's another Hillers goal and that is going to be Kyle Rogers that time making it three to one made a real great play to avoid a check coming out from behind the net and was able to control the puck still and put that right between pads I'd say Hopkinton has certainly won the possession battle so far in the second period and up the far side here comes Walsh rushing in another goal how about that Sean Walsh with his second of the night. Wow. It's a scoring fest for the Hillers in the second period. Blackers might take a timeout here, try to regroup. The Hillers are just all over them. 4 1 Hopkinton. 4 to 1 Hillers is how the score stayed heading to the third period. Just over 10 minutes into the third period. Sean Walsh made his night even more memorable. And Gilbert was looking for the shot, but too many defenders in the area. Zaporoshitz. Zaporoshitz lets it watch, and then it is going to be put in by Walsh. And a hat trick. Walsh had a big wide opening right in front of him, and he almost missed the puck, but was just able to tip it in. And Sean Walsh has a hat trick. As you mentioned, Eric, what a game he is having. Nice, yeah, just the Hillers were all over that, getting the puck right out front, and that's what you do. You go to goal when that puck's going out there, and get the nice bounce, it was right there to put it in. I think we know who's getting the three stars this game. The hat trick for Sean Walsh, and the win for the Hillers. Hopkinton takes down Ashland, 5-2, and improves to 2-0 on the season. It was a night of Hillers' domination against a talented Ashland team. Hiller's swimming is off to a nice start. The Hiller boys and girls are both 2-0 in league meets 
with wins over Norton and Medfield. Hiller's girls basketball picked up an overtime win at home versus Holliston this past Tuesday. Sophomore Caroline Connell knocks down the go-ahead three in overtime to make it 32-30 Hillers, and that's how the score would stay. Caroline Connell finished with a team-high eight points as the Lady Hillers improved to 3-0 on the season. The Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball team defeated Holliston on the road by a final of 74-63. Coach Keens Hillers are now 1-1 overall. Hopkinton Hillers boys and girls indoor track also stand at both 2-0 after taking down Ashland and Medfield so far this season. The Dover Sherborne Hopkinton girls co-op hockey team also off to a good start with two wins and two losses. Hillers Wrestling also has two wins and two losses so far this season. It's been a nice start to the winter season so far for the Hopkinton Hillers. On Saturday, December 15th, the first of six indoor farmers markets was hosted at Weston Nurseries. Here's a look. Farmer's Market, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the uh, first year of the Farmer's Market in the winter. It is, it is. Uh, so Western Nurseries used to host the Farmer's Market six, seven years ago. Then it moved to the Common, and Laura Davis took over as the farm manager. Called Laura a few months ago, said, let's consider a winter market. You think it's a good idea? And she said, excellent idea. They're looking for certain dates throughout the winter. So we set up six dates pretty much once a month. It'll be on Saturdays from um, you know December through May and they'll be from 9 to 1 and we're looking like we're going to get at least you know 18 20 vendors for each market wide range of anywhere from the the vegetable growers to the artisans and maple syrup and the bread company from Worcester everybody loves um, they're all here and we've got music and not-for-profit groups as well so it's a great atmosphere uh, the first one we're holding in our old greenhouses the next ones we'll have in our brand new greenhouse which is really going to be nice oasis escape during the uh, cold winter months so every month we'll have them and we invite the audience to come on down excellent and a huge turnout today uh, did you expect this amount of people actually this is a little better this is a good example of networking Laura of course knows a lot of people Laura Davis but all the um, the vendors did a good job letting their contingencies know and I'm impressed our parking lot is as full as it is in May. <laughs> There's a lot of people here today, so very happy about that. You having a good time? Uh, oh. We are. Uh, you like the farmer's market? My wife is to say, but she's actually... Yeah, so these are all natural herbal skincare products. Everything's made with infused herbs, so you have all the um, healing benefits of the plants. Um, no chemicals. Terrific, so like, what's the company called? Julie Herbals. Uh, my name's Julie. I started this about a year ago. Um, this is my first year doing farmer's markets. And uh, how are you enjoying the farmer's market? I'm enjoying it. Um, I did the I did the Hopkinton farmer's market outside this summer on the common, and this is my first winter market, so I'm excited to be here. Perfect, and a really good turnout today. Getting a lot of visitors over here. Yes, yes. Everybody's shopping for the holidays, which is great. Well, we have zipper pouches and earrings and women's accessories and hats and scarves. Terrific. Uh, can, are you a local business? Uh, what's your company called? Um, Cardinal & Co. And I am in, outside of Burlington, Vermont. And is this your first time at the uh, Winner's Market? It is, yes. 
And how are you enjoying it so far? It's great. The crowd is wonderful. Very friendly. A good turnout? Yes. We are selling heat packs. They can be um, heated in the microwave for those of you who like the heat. Um, they also can be cooled in your freezer if you prefer. We have different sizes. We have neck warmer size. And then our most popular item this season has been the belly bags, which is great for tummy aches or different ailments. Um, all of our products are done made by us. They have essential oils in them. And we kind of just started it by accident. We were looking for Christmas presents and then it just snowballed from there. So. Terrific. Uh, what's your business called and is there somewhere that people can find you online? Yes, um, we are called Natural Creations by CNA for Kathy and Amy. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Natural Creations by CNA. And um, on there, we respond, we have our emails and everything. Awesome, and how you join, I believe this is the first time there's been a winner's market, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Uh, how you enjoying the winner's market? Are you getting a good turnout? We are, we're doing a great business, so come it's, on down in January, too. Yep, we'll be here in January. That's a great, what we're going for. I'm, I'm doing better at taking a break than I have in the past. Yes, we're selling Girl Scout cookies to um, save up money for our camping trip. Uh, we're going to go to a ranch in New York uh, this March. Terrific. And uh, what Girl Scout troop are you girls from? 68243. Uh, how's the turnout been here at the Winter's Market? Are you getting a lot of sales? Yes. We have, uh, we've been doing really well. We, um, a lot of people like the Thin Mints, so we've sold a lot of those and the Caramel Delights. The other five markets will take place on Saturdays. January 19th, February 23rd, March 23rd, April 20th, and May 18th. All markets will be open from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. We start off our best of portion with the Hillers Girls soccer team who, for the first time in school history, advanced to the state championship. Throw in for the Hillers, scoreless between the ninth-seeded Hillers and the sixth-seeded Notre Dame of Hingham Cougars. Tom Nappy, Mike Terosian on the call. Has broke on the entry. Mike also running camera on this beautiful afternoon. Here comes the Hillers, an opportunity here. Shot to the left, and that's in! Goal, Hopkinton, Allie Bird! It comes with 14.54 left to go in the first half. And the Hillers, they have the lead. Allie Bird strikes again. She had the only goal in the win against Medway, and she gets one here. On Monday, November 12th, another great defensive effort by the Hillers girls soccer team led to a sectional finals victory over Notre Dame of Hingham by a final of one to nothing. The Hillers are 4-0 in the postseason and have outscored their opponents 5-0 in the playoffs. That's right, the Hillers have not allowed a goal all throughout the postseason. Out of 22 games the Hillers have played this season, they shut out their opponents in 17 of them and have allowed only 7 goals all season long. The last goal the Hillers let up was all the way back on October 15th. Truly amazing defense. Head coach Wayne Sygrove is in his first season at the helm for the Hillers and is excited about advancing to the state finals. So first off, a big day for a couple of uh, your players today. Uh, you had uh, Natalie Calkins, Gabby uh, Welding signing uh, the letters of intent. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach those two? Yeah, it's been fantastic. Uh, two senior, two captains. Uh, Natalie's out, been our goalkeeper, outstanding. She was just voted our unsung hero of the year. Um, only conceded seven goals all season, zero goals in the tournament. She's been a rock back there for us. Really happy that she's uh, carrying on her athletic career um, at Merrimack College, great school. Um, although she's not playing soccer, she's going to be playing lacrosse. Um, she's got a bright future ahead of her. 
Um, and same for Gabby, she's been outstanding. Voted a TVL All-Star, great leader, scored some vital goals for the girls. Um, and she's moving on to, to UMass Lowell to carry on her soccer career. So they have a bright future ahead of them. Coach, and this is your first year coaching uh, girls soccer, but the team just seems to be, get better every single game. And they've pitched shutouts throughout the uh, postseason. What's it been like to coach this group? It's been fantastic. It's been a great ride. We uh, obviously new season. Uh, so a few bumps in the road early on, getting to know the girls, uh, new system, um, new environment, new culture, new mentality, but the girls have really bought into the process. They've got better each and every game as the season's gone along. Uh, they've grown in confidence, they believe in each other, um, and to win their first tournament final, uh, my first season is fantastic, and hopefully we can uh, finish off and win the state finals this Saturday. And how excited is the team to be heading to the state finals? Oh, they're pumped. They're, we had our banquet um, at the, uh, on Monday after the uh, tournament final, um, and they're so excited. It's been, a, it's been an awesome season, and uh, they just can't wait to get going on Saturday. All right, Coach. Well, congratulations. We wish you the best of luck Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Due to a snowstorm that hit before the scheduled Saturday state championship game, Hopkinton and Winchester met up in the Division II state championship on Sunday, November 18th at Marshfield High School. It was a great defensive battle throughout. Riley Delaney defending in front of the net, and the ball ends up grazing her arm, and in soccer, that is a penalty. In the 59th minute of the game, senior midfielder Grace Casey nets a goal on a penalty kick for Winchester, and that would be all they needed. The game would end by a final of one to nothing. The Hiller girls fall in the state championship and end a tremendous season with a record of 13 wins, four losses, and six ties. Congratulations to head coach Wayne Sygrove and the Lady Hillers on a tremendous season and achieving the deepest playoff run for girls soccer in Hopkinton High School history. The girls may have come up short in the title game, but what a season by head coach Wayne Sygrove and the Hiller girls team. Hopkinton and Ashland football had their 95th meeting on Thanksgiving this year. Here's a look. It was an extremely cold morning, but that did not stop Ashland and Hopkinton for meeting up for the 95th time on Thanksgiving. First offensive snap of the game couldn't have gone any better for Ashland. Jackson Hornung connects with Nathan Sickles who takes it to the house for a 70 yard touchdown. The extra point was no good. Score remains 6-0 Ashland. The Hillers respond in the second quarter. A 28 yard touchdown from Ryan Kelleher to Brendan Kelly evens up the score. The Brendan Kelly extra point puts the Hillers up by one. In the third quarter, the Hillers strike again with some trickery. Three backs lined up, and he pitches to Deloya, who's going to look to throw back. Wide open, beautiful play, and Ryan Kelleher. Ryan Kelleher can throw four touchdowns, and he can catch them. The extra point was good and it makes it 14-6 Hillers. The Hillers struck once again in the third quarter. As he fakes the uh, handoff. Oh wow, what a, what a catch. Brendan Kelly again going to the ground. Brendan Kelly makes an insane catch for his second touchdown of the game and he then kicks another successful extra point to make it 21 to six. And that is how the score would stay the rest of the way. The Hopkinton Hillers finished the season with seven wins and four losses overall, while Ashland finishes with eight wins and three losses. Congratulations on a great season to the 2018 Hopkinton Hillers football team.
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. This year's annual Live for Evan 5K Family Fun Day was yet another success. Here's a look at the festivities. The Live for Evan 5K and Fun Oktoberfest took place at EMC Park. In addition to the 5K, there were games, beverage sampling, live music, and a wide array of other activities. The event drew a big turnout and helped raise funds toward the organization's goal of assisting families with providing a place to stay in Boston while their child is under hospital care. We did have a big turnout uh, and we took a little risk to change the route and change the location and you know keep try to keep things fresh and allow people to have a good time. So yeah, it uh, turned out to be a great day. And now the sun is out and, uh, and it looks like it looks to me like people don't want to leave, so I, I would say that's a good day for us. And uh, you had a couple additions to this year event, including the uh, beer tent over here. We did. We uh, we were thankful we got approval from the, the town to have this little. We call it a beer garden. It's hardly a beer garden, but it's you know a little October festy thing, and and that, that's worked good. We got some food, food trucks here and petting zoo over there, and you know it's really worked out good. So we're happy. For those that don't know, can you talk about uh, what this event is for? Yeah, so it's a Live for Evan event. It's a definitely a fundraiser for us. Um, as you uh, probably know, we're, we secure apartments and, and furnish them and we staff and we, we offer them up for no charge to you know, needy families that are in, with congenital heart defect children um, and their families. And, and uh, so this is significant. We need we need about $35,000 a year to fund and staff and run an apartment so that this will make a good dent in it. So we've got one now direct this year. We've had three three families come through in the year. It's been a fabulous experience for us and, and we're looking to go to two or three by, by Christmas of this year if we can do it. High school teacher Doug Scott, along with the robotic students, took part in a great event that allows the students to network with various professionals. Check it out. This past week, a Girl Powered event took place at Hopkinton High School. The Girl Powered Initiative seeks to encourage female participation in the robotics community and conveys the message that robotics is for everyone. Uh, we're working today to just introduce the fact that STEM or robotics is for everyone. Uh, sometimes students have a stigma about things like that may not be for me. Uh, so we try to create situations where we invite people in and help them realize that they are perfectly capable and this is for everybody. We have mentors that have come in from uh, MathWorks, WebReply, the Hopkinton Public School System. We have. Uh, the New England Patriots uh, Hall has a couple of people that do STEM outreach. We brought them in, as well as a professor from UMass Boston. And they're here to demonstrate to people that, um, you know, again, this is for everybody and uh, you don't always have a one path to, to learn these things and, and there's a way to learn them for everybody. And uh, we also have a nice person that's coming in from uh, Clear Path for veterans who had worked in the Natick Army Labs for a long time. So diverse uh, group of professionals. A handful of representatives from numerous organizations were on the scene. To find out more about Girl Powered, head over to girlpowered.com. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy.
We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and from all of us at HCAM, happy holidays. This past year, the Board of Selectmen recognized some of the hardworking volunteers in our town. Well, we have a, a, a nomination and an award for Heather Smith, who was nominated by Jennifer Andrews. So I'll set this aside and it'll be available in the uh, Board of Selectmen's office for Heather when she wants to pick it up. And Alec Levine was nominated by Ann Marcy. Ann, I see you here. Do you want to just say a word about Alec uh, and why you nominated him? Alec volunteers for a lot, you know, and uh, he does Special Olympics. He was one of the originators of the Hopkins Youth Basketball Program uh -huh. many years ago. And one of the big things that he does is he works with Parkinson's patients mm -hmm. and boxing to help with their balance I guess but he does it well maybe three days a week and close to 2,000 runners have towed the start line on the loop road to run the Sharon Timlin Memorial 5k run to cure ALS also known as Lou Gehrig's disease <clears throat> this is a horrific and currently incurable progressive neuromuscular disease that robs its victims of the use of their muscles. And if anybody's seen it up close, you understand why people like uh, those on the committee have such passion for it. It's awful to watch. Um, unfortunately, uh, I've seen it up close, and a number of people on the committee have too. So mm -hmm. the, you can see where the energy and the dedication and the passion come from for everybody who's involved in ALS research and raising money. Uh, this is a 100% volunteer committee that oversees the race and Family Fun Day and has raised close to $2 million since the race began. Uh, I want to say from the bottom of my heart how much we appreciate what Abby has done, what the committee has done, the Timlin family, and the remarkable people of Hopkinton who have made this so successful. Thank you, Abby. Abby? Andy Rosenberg, thank you. Thank you. You, are, you are the heart and soul of this organization. It's, it's truly a group effort, and um, a group effort both for the committee and UMass and the Timlin family.